So in today's video, we're doing a breakdown of the play to earn game player mon. Imagine Pokemon, Tamagotchi had a baby, and that's how you got player mon. <laughs> so you're probably asking yourself, why are we talking about player mon? Well, we're all kind of degens, right? We're all looking for that next 100x potential play to earn cryptocurrency or coin. I pulled this up here, fully diluted. If all the circulating supply was out there, if Playermon went ahead and hit the same market cap of Axie Infinity, you're looking at about a 5,000x. So the purpose of this video is to go through as many tabs as possible to kind of try and get to the bottom of it. Is there actually potential for it to go ahead and do that? If it's your first time here, my name's Ryan. No autopilot YouTube channel. My claim to fame is doing deep dives, crypto due diligence, investing research, and I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna say it. I think it's some of the best detailed content you're gonna find anywhere on YouTube when it comes to this type of stuff. We look at the founding team, their track record, we look at the tokenomics, the community, the product market fit, give you a bull scenario, a bear scenario, and then at the end, I go ahead and let you know a couple things that could act as potential triggers to go ahead and get this thing to pump. Now, of course, this is not financial advice, I'm just some idiot on YouTube who likes to talk about crypto. If you're gonna invest in something, probably want to take in three different pieces of information and honestly the truth is probably somewhere in the middle now quick shout out to the hardest working patreon and uh and crypto showbiz here if you want to get access to my personal portfolio or you want to suggest to me a project that you want me to cover in one of these deep dives go ahead and take a look at our patreon link is in the description so why do we go ahead we care about this thing well let's take a quick pause how about the gold rush Okay, venture capital has piled into crypto companies in 2021 over $15 billion. And a large portion of that is funneling into play to earn because the play to earn model for gaming is just far superior to what you have in traditional blockchain or traditional gaming. So that's what PlayerMon is trying to chase down. So let's let's give you, you know, some level setting. Okay, so you understand what PlayerMon is, what to expect out of the project. So it's a play to earn game. Again, imagine Pokemon, Axie Infinity had a baby, enter player most. Uh, it launched in November of I believe 21st, yeah, November 21st. So that's after the GameFi summer that we saw last year. It's built on Ethereum, it's powered by Polygon Matic. And in essence, it allows you to go ahead and take your player mons, feed them, bathe them, care for them. Doing so allows them to level up. Those player mons will now hatch with unique traits and abilities. The more you do it, it improves your space den, which you can kind of imagine as like your house. And the better your space den is, the more tax that you go ahead and earn back. And you can also go ahead, you can look at breeding these things. So there's a whole complex uh, evolution system here, right? Where there's different traits and you can merge them together and try and get the best player mon possible. I'm gonna go ahead and play just a little bit of gameplay for you here. Playermon, don't take this down. Don't call me out on YouTube, please. Thank you. So in addition to that, you can go ahead, you can trade these. You'll have the ability to lease your NFTs. So use uh, scholarships to go ahead and earn some money on your passive NFTs. It'll be a PVP, so player versus player. We can go ahead and earn uh, MMR, so a matchmaking ranking. And by doing that, completing some of your daily quests, you're gonna be able to earn some tokens. And then on top of that, you're also gonna have the ability to go ahead and colonize planets, to go ahead and earn some resources, and a whole bunch of other cool stuff, okay? So now that we kinda of got some of the basic things taken care of, just so you understand the gameplay, it's turn-based, again, very similar to Axie Infinity. You select three player mons, you choose their positioning, you're dealt a random ability cards that you have to go ahead and kind of strategize around. And uh, yeah, try and win, try and earn some tokens. Now, one other piece to this thing, which is kind of interesting, is they mention um, the ability to go ahead and kind of create a solar system where players themselves will be able to create mini games using their player mons. And that hasn't been something I've seen before. So if that's something that they could execute on, pretty cool, pretty cool. Now, we talk about the market cap of. So what the heck are these folks trying to chase? Well, if we look at the gaming only, which is kind of metaverse slash gaming, 
was that 10,000 million billion, $23 billion market cap right now for that industry. And PlayerMon is only sitting at a fully diluted market cap around 12 million. So it's definitely under the radar. It's like below where the radar is by like 17 levels. Okay. It's, it's kind of coming up. Um, yeah, so the next place we want to go take a look at here is the founding team. All right, so we kind of have some of the images pulled up for them here. And this is super important, okay? In some of these projects that haven't quite appreciated in value yet, oftentimes the first stop is looking at the founding team, seeing what their experience is, what their track record is, because that can give you an insight on, okay, is this an actual sleeper that could 100X, or is this just a pile of crap that a whole bunch of people came together to try and grab some cash? So I'm going to butcher this name, but G. Cheng Tan out of Malaysia is listed as the CEO. Going through his track record here, his work history, one thing I thought was interesting is that he's actually the VP of the Malaysian Blockchain Association. And I actually followed that through, pulled up the website, and that is, in fact, accurate. He's also been a blockchain developer for quite a while. I did find this interview. Um, he had partnered with the company, worked for a company that in essence tried to bridge the gap for traditional business to business companies to enter into the blockchain. And he ran this two hour long course for developers, really introducing them to blockchain ecosystems. So definitely check the boxes there. Now their other co-founder here is Joseph, Joseph Lang. Now Joseph uh, doesn't have a ton of experience that really gets a lot of uh, confidence out of me, just calling it what it is. It looks like prior to starting PlayerMon, he was a screenwriter and a 3D artist, which to be fair, both of those attributes are helpful when you're creating a game. And then lastly, we have uh, Rayson Wong. And with Rayson, he is the current president of that Malaysian Blockchain Association. So not the VP, but the president. Um, one thing that I saw, and I don't know if I have it pulled up. I don't think I did. But on his Twitter page, actually here, hold on. Maybe I have it here. On his Twitter page, he showed in his thumbnail him sitting next to like CZ and Binance. And I just, that kind of felt like weird clout chasing to have that as your Twitter profile picture. But that as an aside, it sounds like he has some actual experience. And so with all that, they were able to go ahead and raise some money uh, with probably the most notable venture capital partner being X21, which is based out of Asia and uh, does a lot of funding for, for up and coming crypto projects out of there. Now, when we talk about tokenomics, there are two tokens. OK, and this is the next piece that we need to kind of check the box on before we go to invest in it. There's two tokens, PYM and the other one is SGIM. So PYM is the one that you use for purchasing player mods. That's the one that you go ahead and use for governance and for breeding. Now, SGIM is kind of the in-game currency token. It isn't available kind of on your traditional exchanges. And with that one, that's the um, funds that you're going to receive for offering scholarships, being able to sell items in the train hub, and a bunch of other stuff. Let's take a look. What we got in the comments? Alexander. Retract a message. Don't worry about it. What's up, Ed Mundo? Man, I haven't seen you in a bit. Welcome back. Old Bear. First impression so far, it feels gimmicky. Keeping my mind open, though. Yeah, man. That's what I thought, too. That's what I thought, too. So, we go ahead. We look at the token supply. Max supply for PlayerMon is set at 1 billion tokens, with a current circulation of just about 26 million, which is 3%. Now, it does have a check mark on it, meaning that coin market cap has verified this data is accurate. Interestingly enough, though, if you look down here, the project itself has actually reported, self-reported that the total circulating supply is 61 million, not 26. So there does seem to be a discrepancy there. To be fair, that does happen fairly regularly with a lot of these projects because they have tokens that are unlocked and that information doesn't communicate right over to coin market cap and whatever, but just something worth noting. Now we went ahead, we talked about some of their uh, partners. These are all the different projects that went ahead and provided funding. They had a total of five rounds. So we had their seed private round, which raised two and a half million. We had an IDO round, uh, initial game offering round, and then two other IDO rounds, which raised what's that one, two, what? Two, $280,000. Um, so not a, not a great deal. 
One thing, and this is a good call out from uh, um, Palamos, uh, is having a conversation with uh, the founder over there about this project. Um, one thing that's kind of concerning here is the decentralization of this protocol, right? So if the early backers have this many tokens, um, especially once we kind of get into the tokenomics and their vesting schedule, it is uh, quite a bit centralized, right? Because they didn't really raise a great deal of funds in their IDO and IGO rounds. And so there's some concerns there when it comes to centralization. Now, we did touch on that public listing. It did sell out in 32 seconds because the play to earn kind of IDO launchpad scene is freaking hot. Everyone is panicking to try and get on on that next up and comer. So of course, that went ahead and went awesome for them. Now we go ahead, we pull up the tokenomics. A um, couple of things stood out to me. So they mentioned that for their team, the team token, the play reward, staking reward, those are locked and allocated for 10 years, which seems really long. Like I, I like the thought process behind it, but typically you see that like four years or so. The part that I didn't like though, is that their pre-seed, seed and pre-sales went ahead and unlocked a substantial amount of tokens right at total genesis. So I think it was around 15 million tokens out of 98 million tokens that were gone ahead and uh, released for those early backers. And then you can also see daily, <clears throat> there's additional tokens unlocked for those individual groups and it continues pretty much, I think for two, two three years. So that's a little concerning. <clears throat> Typically you wanna see these vesting schedules and these cliffs set up in alignment with the team because you want them to be, um, they want to have some conviction in the protocol for the long term and to go ahead and have them have the ability to go ahead and sell early, uh, I think probably isn't a great sign. In addition to that, the IDO, so the retail investors that wanted to participate in this thing, they were only able to receive 50% of their tokens at launch, which again, out of 5 million tokens, isn't that much, isn't that much. So initially some concerns when we look at that. What else we got? So I already touched on this, what if, right? So <clears throat> my strategy for approaching these type of things is I tend to add them to a portfolio, um, 20, 25 different projects. If 17 of them crash and the other ones do well, overall, I'll probably do okay. And so if you were to add this into a portfolio with that type of strategy, I think you might be in a not too terrible position, right? It could go to zero, but it could also 5,000 X, right? Who knows? Now I did go ahead, I pulled up their Reddit. So the next kind of step along this whole thing is looking at their social media presence because we wanna see if there's a rabid community behind this thing helping it grow. Um, and unfortunately, it doesn't seem like that is the case. So a couple things stood out to me. One on their Reddit, only 100 members. And I do gotta give a shout out to uh, Shackles here. Uh, so poor Shackles kind of shared this last post in the Reddit. In essence, saying that one of the moderators scammed him out of some of his uh, Playermon NFTs and that he ended up reaching out to the CCO Joseph, who uh, offered to go ahead and give him some Playermons for free as long as he shut up. And then once the guy kind of responded back, trying to figure out, okay, why was I scammed? What are we going to do? How are we going to fix this? He was banned. <laughs> he was banned. So I got my little string down here. I told him, hey, look, I'm making a video. I'll share this with everybody. I don't know if it'll help, but Shackles357, if you're out there, feel free to share this video around and hopefully we can get that righted for you if that actually happened. Now, another thing is I go to take a look at their Twitter account. Uh, it shows they have 123,000 followers, which is quite a bit. But if you go through and you kind of scroll on some of their actual posts, I feel like the engagement is pretty low, right? Like the likes, 300 people, uh, the retweets, 99 people. How is that possible if you have 123,000 followers? Just saying, seems weird. Now they do have a medium that is updated very regularly. Um, it looks like in the last couple months, they've had at least a few posts each month. And then of course, their YouTube channel has more subs than I do. <laughs> They're at 26,000. And it seems like more than uh, more recently, they've been going pretty heavy on launches of player mons and different character skins and possibilities and all that good stuff. Now, if we pull it up on play to earn, interestingly enough, this thing is still in development. It's in beta right now, but it's listed as the 105th play to earn project. 
We've reviewed other ones that I would put ahead of this one in terms of my confidence rating, and they were like five, six hundredth in this rating system. But uh, take that for what you will. And then today, in particular, they're up about 500% in their social sentiment score because they're giving away, uh, it sounds about $1.5 million in rewards to go ahead and market the project. So let's see, what else do we have? Now we look at the uh, market performance. I think overall, this is on the all-time chart here. I think this thing has been suppressed by some of those early unlocks for those initial uh, pre-sale uh, investors. Although it wasn't a ton, I think it's kind of sad to see because I, I think it really does kind of kneecap these projects that are trying to bridge and create some publicity, some hype, only to have your IGO get listed, your IDO get listed, and then immediately dump. And I think that could go ahead and parlay back into the tokenomics that we touched on. Now, potential triggers. So there are some burn mechanisms in place. There is one for SG, SGEM, which again is the in-game token that's used for transactions. If that one isn't publicly available for purchase. We're not gonna worry too much about that burn. But they did add that 25% of the circulating supply, current circulating supply of the PYM token is going to be burnt. And they just had one happen, what is this, January 27th. And that's taken out of a percentage of the revenues. So we have it right here, a portion of the PlayerMon platform revenues from transaction fees will be used to buy back and then burn PYM tokens quarterly to stabilize the value of PYM. Um, interestingly enough, there was no information at all about this in the white paper. So it sounds like maybe this was a new addition after a lackluster price um, movement on the project. Now we touched on this already. Another thing that could go ahead and potentially pump this thing is they have a 1.5 million giveaway going on. I think this was launched today. Uh, if you go ahead and you engage them on Twitter, you tweet 10 friends and you go through and do all these tasks, you have the chance to go ahead and earn your piece of that pie. I'm not gonna participate in that because I don't like tagging my friends on like weird random crap like that. But hey, if you want to, feel free to get it. Now, one thing that's worth, I think, patting you on the back for is the roadmap, right? So we got this thing started in May, again, right when play to earn was booming, right, in crypto. So they get, and they got the idea to go get this thing off the ground. Um, they've been very thorough in actually executing on a lot of these pieces. So I think if I was gonna give them a pat on the back, I think they've been doing really well there. Uh, if we look at kind of what's next, they talk about launching the Tower of Creator, the planet gameplay, and a few other pieces. Now, I think another potential trigger for this thing is it isn't listed on very many exchanges, with Gate.io probably being the most prominent one, and that one in the United States is used very, very rarely. So I'm gonna give you two scenarios, okay? Because I'm not gonna tell you to buy this thing or not, but I'm gonna give you two scenarios, okay? First, we're gonna start with bullish, all right? So, it's a play to earn project that builds off the success of Axie Infinity, and it lures in a wave of investors and players chasing that next play to earn gem. We've seen from that initial IDO that sold out in 30 seconds that the FOMO is real when it comes to play to earn, and that's gonna give them ability to go ahead and have a bunch of revenue to try and get this thing off the ground. Their team with their experience in art design, web design, marketing, blockchain development are able to launch an addictive play to earn ecosystem that hooks players and keeps them and they play it and actually enjoy the damn game. In addition to that, as I feel that GameFi is the future of crypto, PlayerMon is able to ride that rising wave of the GameFi space regardless of if it's a legitimate project or not. I think there's a potential for this to go ahead and appreciate either way. So let's go, let's talk about the bull scenario. Excuse me, the, the bear scenario. We already did bull, the bear scenario, okay? So we already saw in the Reddit that there's not that many people. The community seems a little lackluster. We had one user, which isn't verified if this is actually true or not, saying that one of the mods to PlayerMon stole some of his uh, PlayerMon NFTs and that he was banned for complaining about it. I think the team, although they have some experience, has uh, unproven themselves when we look at actually building games. And they were just really able to cobble together just enough to go ahead and earn some money from their IDO in what is a hot play to earn market. I think in addition to that, the tokenomics, the fact that the IDO didn't raise that much from retail investors, the centralization nature of this protocol is 
pretty much in the hands of the founding team and the private backers, which doesn't sound that bad. But if you also layer in the fact that they're planning on adding staking at some point, and now those early backers are going to be in a position, a prime position to go ahead and maximize the returns on those staking rewards, it's kind of like a double whammy to regular retail investors trying to get in this thing. So I think since it has the potential to go ahead and be a cash grab, if they are unable to go ahead and lure players into this ecosystem, the NFTs aren't going to be worth nothing. People aren't actually playing the thing, and the word kind of gets out that it's not that great of a project to follow. In addition to that, there's awesome, literally awesome, play-to-earn games launching, seems like, every single day. So is it that hard for this one to kind of get lost in the shuffle because of those issues, those concerns, and not really getting it off the ground? Now, I think overall... It has the potential to go ahead and pump, again, due to the overall market pumping. But I think the risk there is the waste of your time, your money, and your energy uh, when there's other top-tier projects out there that you could go ahead and you could do really, really well on. And then finally, those early backers with that super short vesting and unlock schedule enables them to go ahead and cash out, enables them to go ahead and stake, earn those rewards over your head, and you're kind of left out. So. That's my review of PlayerMon. What do you think? What did I miss? Let me know in the description down below. Also, what project am I reviewing next? You guys gotta let me know. Hit me up. Whatever, whatever project gets the most upvotes on this video, I promise I'll make a video about. So let me know what you think. Boom.